yo, okay. Hell of a boss is back! <laughs> Hell of a boss is back, okay? This is season two, episode one. It's called The Circus, okay? I have been waiting for this, honestly, only a few months, but I know many of y'all have been waiting for this since October, I believe, was the last episode. We've seen all kinds of character development, all kinds of action that has happened, and I'm just excited to really dive into this, so I'm really not going to waste too much time. I'm not doing a recap or anything. If you want to see the previous reaction, a link will pop up in the card, so you can go ahead and tap that so you're at least caught up. Thank you, Bipsy Pop. Special thank you to Bipsy Pop and Spindle Horse for creating this masterpiece. I already know this is going to be incredible. Hit that like button and subscribe today if you want to see me react to the rest in the series. I probably will anyways, but I appreciate your support. Oh, here we go. Y'all ready? Warning, the following cartoon contains graphic violence, strong language, sexual themes, flashing lights, as well as rampant demon horniness. So yes, it's intended for mature audiences. I say this all the time, okay? My channel is not a family-friendly channel, okay? I may be wholesome sometimes, but I'm not family-friendly, and nor is this content, okay? If you are triggered by any of this, or you are young, impressionable youth please do not watch watch a different show turn this off it's not worth the watch time all right we're gonna get into it viewer discretion is advised mm. my birthday my birthday it's my birthday oh is this Yay, young birthday birthday woohoo birthday time calm yourself is young Stullis? Young prince, you know excitement is unbecoming of a Goisha. Oh, right. But father told me today is the day I am old enough to know my purpose and responsibility. Of course, I'm sure it will be wonderful. Or am I tripping? I want to say this is young Stullis, but I could be tripping. Oh! Ah, there is my little, uh... Which son is this one? There are so fucking many. Stole us, your highness. Right off the bat, we're seeing where some of his daddy issues come from. Right off the bat. Now we under... I think already I feel like I know why Stullis is such a great father and tries his best to be a great father figure to his daughter now. It makes a lot more sense. Look at this dude. Look what he just said. That's awful. Stolas. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That's the one. The owl boy. Well, my little one, it is finally your day of becoming a true part of the Goisha family. How good for you. Are you ready to know what you will be meant to do to serve hell? Yes, father. You will be entrusted with the study of the Earth's skies, the, stars, mm -hmm. the prophecies they hold, all that stuff. Isn't that fun? You will begin the studies of your grimoire, which will grant you access to the mortal realm to study and observe, and you will grow to be a mighty prince of hell with your own legions to lead and pass on your knowledge to. I will do my best, father. Wonderful. Also, son, you are destined to sire a precautionary addition to the Goisha family, so you are now engaged. Congratulations. Oh, no. Oh, no. Forced marriage? Oh, no. Is she charming? Poor Stullis. Oh, that's an ugly noise, son. Here, how about you cease this bitch crying? <laughs> that usually works. <laughs> Oh, would you like it if I took you to the circus in town? Children enjoy the circus, right? Would that distract you enough from your non-negotiable future marriage? Wow. Now we're getting it. Now we understand why Stullis took his daughter to um uh the amusement park and everything, Lululand, right? Now we're getting it. That was the way that he was treated when he was upset. But, oh man, this is, it's making so much sense. Like a lot of the interaction that we've seen is being, is being explained a lot through a lot of this exposition, which is great. Is the 
There are spots that is close to the front, but also far enough that I don't have to uh, smell the poor. <laughs> it's just a butthole, bro. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> nah. He really got him in a mirror watching it, like, from afar because he doesn't want to sit too close to the poor. He's like trying to stay awake. He's that bored. He hates this. Ready, Blisso? Born ready. Blisso! Blitzo? This is his past? No way he fell in love with Blitzo all the way back then. Ain't no way. This is so different than what I was expecting. Ah, <laughs> hey, you folks, want to see me make a horse? Was that an actual boom? Crap. Oh, no, bruh. Oh, man. Is this them trying to say that everything that Bilzo create or Blitzo creates is is like just gets destroyed? Is that what we're basically seeing right now? Like he can't confidently make anything that will last. That's actually this is really sad. <laughs> Mans can't even just blow a regular balloon. Horns. Well, it was a horse, but then it ate too much sugar and its legs stopped working, so it had to amputate. Now it's a gross worm horse. <laughs> See, he gets it. This horses, they make no sense. Oh. I love it. That's his ideology. Instead of trying to fix it again and toil with that, he decided to just create a whole other story around the animal to make it acceptable. It's very interesting. Okay, Blitzo, that's enough horsing around. Hey, everybody, look oh, at this. Oh, of course. Is that, fi horse is that his brother or Fizz? He looks a lot like Fizz with what he's wearing, but that that's probably his brother. His broken horse stroke it was funny. Their legs do stop working. Oh, that's right. His brother is Fizz. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm tripping. He eat too much sugar. It's called laminitis. <laughs> what a show! <laughs> that was real great. So, uh, <clears throat> that little clown that you have, my son really enjoyed that one. I was wondering if I could buy him. Buy him? Purchase him. Yes, accurate. My son doesn't have any friends, you see, and he liked the little clown boy. It's his birthday. He's so sad, and I don't want to deal with him. Can I write a check? Well, Fizzeroli is a big draw. He has a few more shows to be in today, so it would be pretty expensive. <laughs> no, no. The other Not one. This. Let's Let's go. Correct. How much? Uh, well, well, he's my son, so I, mm, uh, how much you got in your pocket? He's really selling his own son. A uh, watered up five in a slim fit condom. Yeah, that's plenty. Done. Splendid. Fetch him for me and we will be on our way. Oh my God. I have no legs. Oh, well, that's okay. I lost my legs in the war. <gasps> the war? Yes, the great pirate war. No, no pirates. The great pirate war. If you keep talking about pirates, I will punch you. 
I fought bravely, but I could not run fast enough. They took my legs. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> oh no, ew, no blood. Blood is disgusting. No, it's cool. <laughs> I wonder who they got to act out these kid voices. I just tripped off of that. <laughs> well, Banana Pudding is here to save the day. With his magical feet, he dances around with. He would dance all over Warren Morse and make him feel better. And then... There'll be four of me then! <laughs> what so? That's so gross! Stop! Never! So, Blitzo clearly had a very active imagination. Uh, albeit a little bit twisted and dark and violent. And possibly the reason for that is the trauma of being a kid that's wrapped up in the freaking moving circus. Boy, I got a job for you. You are gonna spend the and a neglectful father that wants to sell him for a freaking slim fit condom and a piece of candy. Day with one of the Goisha princes. And a rolled up, sorry, a rolled up five dollar bill. Ew. Why? Because money! Now listen carefully. You are being brought out to be his playmate. But I want... Like, you're telling me right now that your son was not making you enough money to be able to, tw to thwart that deal. Either that or he's just, he's just that stupid. His father is just that dumb. And Blitzo gets all of his memory intellect and everything from his mom. I want you to steal as much from those rich fuckers as you possibly can. Steal? But... Oh, what that's what he's Don't doing. Don't you want your family to be able to buy a bigger tent? Better food? Don't you want to be able to help me and your mama out? Of course I want to help mama. Then you gotta do this. Everything Where's mama? Fucks have will be worth a fortune. But if I'm caught, I'm scared, dad. There are scarier things. Aren't there, son? But... Yes, Papa. Mm-mm. This is awful. Here is your new friend, my son. A happy birthday. A friend? I guess. Hi. Uh, I'm Blitzo. I'm Stoneless. It's nice to... Ouch! Don't borrow that one. He bows to us, idiot. Oh, right. Sorry, father. I'm so good at daddying. Mm -mm. This is my book on the difference between frogs and toads. There's a lot of differences. And this is my book on plants and herbs. Did you know plants can hear you? Plants are boring. This is all boring stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. I've never had a friend to share my books with. You know it would be fun. A game. Let's play. Treasure hunt. What's that? It's mm -mm. where we pretend we are pirates and we go around the house collecting all the nicest things and then we throw them out the window. We throw them out the window? Yes. Since when did pirates throw things out windows? Since like the. Look, even he can see the hole in this logic. He can see the hole in the logic. On the time. Come on. Pirates are always throwing stuff out windows. I don't think they had windows. What? Did a book say that? Yes, actually. Several. Well, in this game, we're throwing them out the window because it's fun. Well, that's an odd game. <gasps> Is this an imp game? Sure. Well, that's racist. That That's racist, right? <laughs> but it makes sense, right? Because he comes from an entirely different class. That's the reason why, that's the only way he could relate to what he's saying. He's like, all right, I've never heard of this before. This sounds weird. I read all these books and I've never heard of this game. It must be a game that comes from an entirely different subset and culture. Well, if it's what you want to play, let's do it. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Uh, this sucks. This sucks so bad too, because this is going to be Stolas' idea of all imps, right? All those riches. <laughs> I love it when riches and gold and treasure is animated and shown like this in cartoons. I go all the way back to my experience of watching uh, Aladdin 
the movie and seeing the way that the entire like cave filled with treasure was. And in my head, I will never forget that. There's something very brilliant about seeing the sparkles and everything animated. <laughs> Look at that big old bag. They emptied the entire cellar. That bag can hold all of that. I relate to this story so much being a kid that did not grow up with a whole lot and visiting friends houses that were just at a different level class level than I was you know I was lower I lived in a neighborhood that was uh, lower to middle class and then another part of the neighborhood that was straight up just upper upper to middle class so I went to a lot of, and I went to a school with a lot of upper to middle class uh, kids uh, that were also from a different culture. And it was actually mind blowing for me to visit their homes for the first time. And unfortunately, because I was young, those thoughts of, I can just take a few things here and they won't even miss it, you know, plagued my brain being a young kid. And I'm not gonna sit here and, and lie to y'all, there were a couple of times where I stole. I stole from a couple of kids. I remember stealing from this one kid at this birthday party a bunch of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Pokemon cards from him. And I feel bad about it to this day. But the problem was, was that I came from an entirely different culture, an entirely different subset, and I was young. And just stealing one or two cards from this kid made my allowance for like the next few weeks. You know what I mean? So I just... There is such a big disconnect there that lo you lose empathy in the moment because you're like, they have so many things. You're not thinking that regardless of they, if they have all these things, that they might still feel the loss and betrayal that comes from letting someone in your home and then experiencing them taking things from you. I have to learn it so that I can access the living world. The living world? Like the world with humans and stuff? Where the sinners come from? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yes. This is where he first I'm learned about the Grimmer. Wow. To study the sky. Why? My dad says I can find prophecies, but I don't really know. But I'm supposed to. That's what my job this will be deep. when I grow up. To join the rest of the Goetia family. Well, you know what I'm going to do when I grow up? I'm going to run my own circus, and I'm going to be the most famous imp ever. And I'll be able to do what I want to do. All day, I'm gonna make so much money and buy myself a big building with a big office. A big office? For a circus? Yeah, a big office. Circus business with clowns and horses. And the horses will all have good names like Stapler and Biscuit Queen. <laughs> I'm sure you will. That sounds like a good business. Yeah, and if you apply, I'll hire mm. you. Maybe. <laughs> You'll hire me? Yeah, if I feel like it. Well, I hope I qualify. <laughs> You'd be a good boss. You say that with sarcasm, but I totes would. <laughs> 25 years later. Oh. 
he literally wakes up dreading his life. And I love seeing the Stolas character because he is so complex. He is so complex as a character. Like being surrounded by all of these riches, being at a high royal standpoint, having access to pretty much anything that he could desire. And he's still so crippling unhappy. I like how he checked the book and flipped through it real quick for reasons that we don't fully know. Maybe just to see it. But the way that he went about it was almost like someone checking their phone real quick in the morning and scrolling through their feed. I know still being married isn't a big enough occasion, but to be fair, it's no picnic being married to a boring stiff like Stolas. Oh man, she is so angry all the time we never see her in a state of serenity or happiness ever and i just i need to know how their relationship got to this point outside of it being a forced marriage from the get-go and stolas is clearly not a straight cis owl being right besides all that why is she so angry bruh Stella, what in hell is this? Ugh, Not Stolas, divorced you know party. Like parties. Plus, it's true, so you can come if you want. I've never heard of a not divorced party. I've never heard of that in my life. I've heard of like vow renewals. <laughs> Did I just say vowel renewals? I meant vow renewals. I <laughs> <laughs> no, Stonas is terrible in bed. I swear to fuck, he just lays there staring at the wall, and I have to do everything. It's embarrassing. I'm glad one egg fell out of me so I could stop pretending to want to fuck his scrawny twig ass. Ah, <laughs> she's double fisting drinks at this point, talking mess about Stella's to her friends. And they're laughing about it like this is just a laughing matter. This is all bad. She's like as gone as it possibly can be. This is a uh-uh. We need a divorce. <laughs> what a pathetic fucking man. She knew he was listening. She knew he was listening. And she really took the time to turn around and say it again. <laughs> At their own what party. Pathetic fucking man. <laughs> Do you have anything stronger than this? We have absinthe, your highness. Ooh, absinthe. Bring all of it. That is a strong drink. The alcohol percentage is one of the highest in the world, I believe, for absinthe. It's banned in most places uh universally right it's banned in most places globally it's hard to find it is hard to get there are some places where you can get it but it's because it is so dangerous and he's chugging it we got this nasty imp trying to sneak into your chambers what should we do with him into my chambers really oh well that is concerning Mm. Leave him to me. I will handle him accordingly. Look at that face. Uh-uh. Follow me, imp. Also, notice the hierarchy again. There, That looks like a dog and a wolf. Uh, I believe they're, like the hierarchy is very, very important here. Follow me, imp.
He looks so unhappy with the wife. Look, look how happy he is with his daughter, though. Look, I, I didn't mean to interrupt your whatever the party. I, I was just trying to. Don't bother with excuses. I know why you were here. You do. Yes, you were here to ravish me, weren't you? Uh, you? Why else would you be breaking into my room? You could have asked to visit, you know. It's been a long time, but I have a very good memory. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I figured, you know, since you're a prince and all, it might just be easier to you know, scale the walls and slip on in. It certainly is easier mm -hmm. than going through your fucking staff. One would think you might be here for nefarious reasons if you are sneaking in during the cover of night. Well, I wanted to crash the party, and it's always more fun, you know, to make an entrance. I recall how you enjoy making an entrance. So, over two decades since I last saw you, are you still a circus clown? Oh, <laughs> no, no, not anymore. No, I kill people now. Oh, <laughs> how afraid should I be? Hmm. Well, so this is how he started this. So this is how he got the book. We're we're witnessing how he first got the book. Well, I mean, how afraid do you want to be? Oh, well, um, well, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I was teasing. I don't really. You, know, you seem pretty tense. How about I help you out there? Uh-uh. Um, you know, this is, um, getting a wee bit, is it hot? I'm starting to feel it getting very hot. Oh, what are you doing? I barely remember your name. Ah, uh, that was smooth. It's lit. Like, this was literally their relationship from the beginning. Him, uh, using his wit and his charm to try and get Stolas in a vulnerable position so he can take everything from him. Oh, didn't it have an o and he doesn't end? know any like better. It's name? so toxic. <sighs> yeah, well, it's silent now, okay? So call me Blitz. Okay, Blitz. What are you doing to me? What do you want me to do to you? I, uh, well... Uh, ah, ah, oh my fuck. Uh. Oh, wow. Oh, you are so forward, Blitz. Oh, what are we doing? No, no, stay down, damn it. Oh, so you like to command? You like being in charge, hmm? Yeah, I sure do. Oh, so you're a kinky little mm -hmm. Do you like it when I talk to you dirty? I want you to me with your No, stop it. Yes, if that's what Blitzy wants. Blitzy, oh my yes. Oh, I've never had anyone want me this way. You have no Literally, that's the problem. That's so sad. It's so sad that he has been abused and mistreated so badly by partners in the past that he doesn't realize that Blitzo is manipulating him. He just doesn't realize it. No idea how long I've craved this kind of passion and how much it means that the one who wants me is... My first ever friend. Look at that. That's sad. <sighs> yeah, you have a heart. Blitz has a heart. We've seen it. All right, fine. I can do this real fast. Sorry, I fucked your husband. What? Oh, now I remember this. That was the sound of a fucking divorce. You go, Stullis. Perfect. I can. That's the one thing I can get behind. Out of every, <laughs> I can get behind. Oh Lord, I'm gonna have to pause that. Uh -uh. Let me just give it a moment to. Okay. Uh, that's one thing I can get behind. I'm glad that he finally divorced her. Oh. 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 
for present day finally oh happy pills huh Oh man, this is sad. Out in a cage, you show your age, your sweetness has run foul. Without a change, you're lost, exhausted by your time on stage. Then you walked in my room. And like sparks in the dark, life was suddenly Ooh. thrilling and new. What's between you and I? Just a comfortable lie. I'm the fool who believes when you look in my eyes. Inside Ooh. your gilded chair. The fuck are you doing? Reflecting. Well, stop! It's annoying to hear you screeching your silly woes all the time. Why are you still here? You leave with fear on weekends, but then you stay around the house despite everything. I like tormenting you. I Aww. want to keep reminding you of what you did. I know what I did. I would feel bad if I hurt you, but we both know I didn't do that. Mm. You and I were arranged for one reason, to birth a precautionary heir to the Goetia family. Nothing more. I tried so many years to make it comfortable for us to have this family, but it was never enough. The only reason I have endured your constant insults and cruelty was for that girl to have a normal life. Mm -hmm. I cannot do this anymore. I want you out now. What do you mean, out? I yeah, mean what out. does that mean? Out of this palace, out of my life. We are getting the divorce. How so they never fully had it? It's how long has it been since he stole the grimoire and did all that and announced the divorce? How dare you? What do you think the rest of the Goetia family will think? And Drelf is- I don't care what your arrogant brother thinks. And the only thing the Goetia family wanted from our marriage is already 17, so it's over. I'm done. Mm. Fine. I have no desire to stay in the place of a traitorous embarrassment. You have fallen from what little grace you had, and I know you'll pay for it. <sighs> wow. Every one of these episodes are masterpieces. Look at all these people who worked on this. Wow. Spindle horse, they really snapped. They seriously snapped with this one. That was Hell of a Boss, season two, episode one. I really, really love how they went back in the past and we were able to see young Stolas 
and his interaction with his father because it explains his behavior and it also explains why he adores Blitzo so much. We even got to see we got to see both Stolas and Blitzo's interactions with their parent with their father, with both of their father fathers. And I think like them showcasing that was them kind of trying to explain why they be why they behave the way they do. They both have severe daddy issues severe daddy issues okay and um we also got to see really the reason why there was such a big rift in stolas stolas's marriage his married life and what that was like trying to be in an arranged marriage knowing that he is not sexually or romantically attracted attracted to his partner in any kind of way and he's really just trying to appease his family it's a very very different and specific type of pressure that i like them showcasing in this video in this show because it does help uh start and facilitate a conversation about the importance of fathers the importance of strong male role models in a household and what that can do to a person so i like that it kind of starts a bit of commentary about that that was hell boss season two episode one I'm excited for more episodes. I'm excited to watch and see how all of this plays out. And I'm just so incredibly proud of Vivsy Pop and the Spindle Horse team. They really, really came through. That episode was everything, every bit of worth the wait. And I'm excited to watch more. But y'all can let me know what you thought of this episode and more in the comment section below. Hit that like button. Of course, if you enjoyed my reaction and commentary on all this, join the Alien Armada by subscribing today and hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever I drop a new video or go live with the Alien Armada show. Like I mentioned, a link will pop up to the previous episode where I reacted to Hell of a Boss. And uh, <laughs> just stick around for more because I can't wait to dive further into this season. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for taking a chance on my content. And I will see everyone in the next video.